Hello YouTube, it is your Friday E video and I'm going to go over a few things before we do one log, we're going to saw a log for you after this is all over. And sorry about the piece of bark that got on the camera lens, I mean I can't see that when I'm sawing so I'm very sorry about that but I'm doing some just a little bit of maintenance work up here and this uh, new motor on a swing saw has given us a couple challenges. Um, so I finally got a banded belt, which is a belt that is two belts linked together. They call it a banded belt. And this belt here seems to have a lot of slap in it. So I bought a just an idler pulley. So I'm just adjusting. And when I build stuff, I just sort of I just sort of build by eye, and then I can adjust things. So I'm going to make a couple more modifications. But it is going to ride behind the belt keeping a little bit of tension on it to keep that slap out of it and I think that'll work perfect because that'll be about between the top and the bottom pulley so I think this will correct that problem so that problem will be solved that motor is doing a great job uh, it's been cutting our slabs up and you can see the the amount of slab wood is growing um, we'll take a walk out back people want to see the sawdust bin I don't know why people are fascinated over that but <clears throat> I'm glad people are watching our channel. Um, but yeah, basically, it just takes it from the saw blade and blows it in this big pile, and we keep it under roof nice and dry, and this is a commodity. You can sell this. Uh, just don't put no walnut in it. And we got people that uh, buy the pickup truckload. One guy brings a 15-yard dumpster box. And around back here, this is the back of our kiln, kiln cargo container, which uh, we're going to be getting moving on here. This is the actual sawdust blower itself, and it runs off of another 13 horsepower Predator motor. I'm not going to uncover it. And it just basically takes that uh, sawdust off the head saw through an 8-inch pipe into the blower, up and over into the bin. And even with the blower on there, I'll show you the next project I got to do. I'm going to probably fire up the blower and do some cleanup. Because here's what happens. And we're a small scale sawmill. We don't, we don't saw very much. But when we do saw, it does a little bit of blow by on this thing. So. And here's what happens, usually in front of the blade, and this is probably about, oh, probably two months worth of accumulation. So I just fire the blower up and I just get a shovel and I just throw it right down the chute there. And away it goes through the pipe out the blower. And the reason I have to go down and back up is because that pipe will not clear underneath the tracks. And it just, it, it works out good. And this almost makes a sawdust trap and it catches, or a, a bark trap and it catches our bark. But there's our 56 inch saw. I was gonna sharpen, but it's actually quite razor sharp right now. So I don't even wanna get into that. So I think what we'll do here is uh, we're gonna do a little bit of cleanup and then I'm gonna get in the saw cab here in a bit and we're gonna fire the mill up. And I'm going to give you a um, in-depth look at the controls one more time. So we're going to do some cleanup, and I'll talk to you here in a little bit. All right, so that's about 45 minutes worth of heavy-duty cleanup here, and we won't do run log turn until I got Eddie, and uh, we'll usually have a couple wheelbarrows. So it's going to be mostly bark, but you can get an idea how this equipment is all situated in here. A lot of people want to see the behind the scenes of this mill. And there's a lot going on that you don't really see when I'm in a cab. Um, I do get comments about these loader arms. They want to know why can't I control them individually. Well, these loader arms are controlled off of one arm, which is controlled off of that hydraulic cylinder right there. And when it pushes, all three come up, and every one of them have this big heavy-duty spring. And this spring, I don't know if I can get it to do it or not, but this spring... Well, it's, it's, it's too far down. Um, it takes up all the difference in the size of a log. So if a log's fat on one end or if it's a knot sticking out, they, they take up all the shock so that you're not pushing hard with hydraulics. It's actually that spring you're pushing with. And uh, there's our turner that we had rebuilt. Oh, I don't know, I guess we're about a year or more into that. I, didn't put, I should have put a date on that. And here's the infamous dogs. Um, 
And some people say, well, only one dog's holding it. Well, if you don't see this, whenever the log's too big, this one is spring-loaded and so is this one. This one will hide out of the way, then this one will grab it. So if you see a couple top ones holding and one bottom one holding, you're thinking that there's only one dog holding it. That's what's going on. Um, these things right here are what we call hydraulic tapers, um, like on John's um, mill, they, they call them, some people call them throwouts. Um, there's, there's some different names for them, but basically that allows you to taper a log on the carriage. And some people have asked me why I don't put hydraulic cant turners, which would flip the log. Basically a cant turner has just the bottom part of this dog, it comes up and it rolls it forward. If I do that, I lose absolutely every taper on my mill. And there it is, the infamous master dog. Uh, I don't know how you could run a mill like this without that, especially if you're sawing anything over 24 inches and you want to make sure you got a good hold on it. So, all right, uh, let's go up in the cab here and here's the camera holder. So this is where the camera actually sits in this little uh, holder here. So I put the camera in there. So the, the camera sits right out here in front of the blade. So that's how that piece of bark got on there. And, and I can't see that. So I mean, we're making videos here, um, you know, it's all I can do. All right, up in the saw cab here, I'll give you a quick little walk through here. And I think I'm gonna fire the motor up and then we can actually load a log on there and show you what all the buttons do. So the first thing is, is my start button. And you'll always hear the iconic start of the old bus motor. And then that right there is my inverter. And that is my 110 volt power. That is my air, my air, <coughs> air conditioner. This rotates the camera, so if you're wondering, sometimes I forget to rotate the camera, that's what happens. So let's go put the power takeoff on, on the old bus motor here. Now Eddie normally does all this. And there it is. What do you think, Louie? So that basically is my power takeoff. And This is the throttle. We're not going to put that up because it'd be just too noisy. So let's go do a little cab tour here. Hopefully everybody, everybody's asking about this. Uh, there's a lot of new people to the channel. Um, so we'll give you a little tour here. And there's a lot of things going on in here. So first thing I do is I crack a bit. No, um, turn on my uh, laser. And that is the uh, laser light. So, first step, we want to saw this log. Well, looking at the uh, dial on that carriage, I don't know how good you can see in there. I know it's hard for me to see. This plexiglass is shot. So, we're going to hit the reverse button on the knees and watch them open. So, we're going to judge that log. Just say we want 18 inches, which is way more than enough. I got three foot pedals down here. This controls the chains on the deck. This controls the loader arms, and this controls the stop and load. So we're gonna to go to this pedal here, we're gonna push down, and you're gonna watch the log come up into the cradles, which is the stop and load. If you want, so if you want technical terms of what this stuff's called. Okay, now we're gonna stop and load. Now, here's whenever you gotta line the carriage up. So when I pull back on this stick, it brings my carriage forward. And when I push back on the stick, carriage goes backwards so now we just got done sawing that last log so we bring it over and by the best of your judgment you got to bring this up and you say okay is that good enough you tweak it now if this log rolls down straight we're in good shape so what are we going to do next pedal which is my stop and load so when i push forward on the pedal Well, it, that log is a little egg shaped, so you gotta give it a little extra. Let's give it a little slam here. Oh, it's not cooperating. See, a round log is a good thing. And this is kind of a male log. All right, let's see if our loader arms, that's the middle pedal, let's see if they'll grab this thing. Okay, they got it out of the way. How about that? So, we're gonna push the loader arms up. It shoves them tight to the knees. Now, 
I like to position my log first. So this next stick here, when I pull back on it, you'll see the log turner come up. When I push forward on it, log turner goes down. So when I come up and I go to the left a little bit, you'll see the chain start to rotate. So, and this is kind of hard to do. I'm holding the camera here, so bear with me. So we come up, we bring the stick over, and I got this thing island right now, so the hydraulics are just barely moving. And that's that's what I like to cut off first, right there. Just that kind of stuff that you're looking at. So now we got a position. The log turner got it holding it where we want it. What do we need to do next? We need to dog it. So we put the dogs up to their maximum height. We hit the out button. Remember, you put the dogs out, you gotta put the dogs in. And then you hit the dogs down button. Then you know that you got a good hold of it. So now we can put the turner back down. And this log, basically, and I'm gonna put that uh, cradle arm back. So it's ready for the next log. So now you got the log kind of positioned on a carriage where you want it. Now, we hit the forward button and we look at the green laser light. And you can see there's a nice line on it. So just say we were sawing this, we'd come up to the blade and I can't saw it with this thing island with no dust system. But anyhow, I'll just give it a little nick here. And you'll see where that little nick's at. And I don't know if you'll be able to see the laser light. It gets you pretty darn close. If you see that little nick in that log and that laser line, that pretty much tells you where your cut's gonna be. The laser light is not an accurate uh, device. It's not used for setting board thicknesses. Okay, so, just say it was a bigger log. Now here's the master dog. Down and up. And that's how that works. And once we open up the first cut on the log, now we got five more buttons. And these are called sets. And I have five presets. And underneath of that yellow box by the master dog is all the controls that run that. So um, each one is a board thickness. So if I press my number one, which I'll do, and I'll show you on the log, now watch, I'll hit the button. That is a one inch board. It's not four quarter, it's one inch. It cuts a full one inch. This next one I got set at four quarter. I could set these at whatever I want. It's all adjustable, but it takes a minute to go out and do it. That's one reason I do like to think about we're gonna to go to a computer someday, we might. Number three, I got that set an inch and a half. Number four is a full two inch. And number five, we really don't use, but it would be a real thick board. So uh, we'll go ahead and back that back up. So you see how that works. Now, we got more buttons, how about that? These are the tapers. This is in and out, in and out for my hydraulic tapers. So my number one, that red taper on front of that log there, you'll see it will come out. I got the log back too far, so at least I can demonstrate it for you. If that was a big fat log on the back and that was a skinny end up here, I could taper that log out and make it parallel with the saw. So I hope this gives you a little insight of what goes on in this cab. Uh, yeah, it's absolutely a mess. Uh, that's one of my heaters, which I don't like that one. It's a propane. Then I got that little ceramic job down there and uh, that little thing will heat you out of this cab. And then this is my little air conditioner. So that just gives you just enough air. and <laughs> just uh, it just keeps you cool. Uh, this is not a high-tech mill. We don't have uh, we don't have a stereo in here, and and that's uh, where Eddie does all his work. And we basically watch each other through this window, and uh, that's how you get all your hand signals. And basically, and this is why it's so important for me to watch that blade, to watch that log, and watch Eddie's fingers. So I'm not worried about a piece of bark. And I'm not worried about, you know, I'm sorry, we're shooting videos, but uh, that's just the way it works. So I hope you enjoyed this saw cab video. And 
And you'll be here tomorrow night. It's actually Tuesday night. We'll shoot you the Friday Eve video. We'll saw up this little piece of pine. We're just going to make some two by fours out of it. So we'll talk to you when we're sawing that up. Alrighty, let's start this sawing. And we're going to try something different here. Um, I'm not sure which camera I'm going to show. I'll be surprised in the end of this video. And if this uh, inside the cab one turns out decent, um, I'll show it. It's going to be a little bit shaky, a little bit blurry, but everybody wants to see how everything works here. So, where we left off on the last time I was running the camera is, uh, let me turn the laser and the power back on here. We was just positioning the log. So what I'm going to do is, it's hard to do with one hand, so we're going to make do and just uh, see if I can get you some nice video. So, I want to just roll that back up a little bit more. So I hit my dogs up. I was just looking at it the way it was sitting. So, I kind of like that better. All right, now. looks a little bit better all right now i gotta remember to turn that camera see how i do that so every time someone yells it says well i'm gonna bring in a little bit more and i'm not gonna do this too often unless i come up with a really efficient way to do it Now we're going to press our board thickness. There we go. We put a one inch set. This log got a little rod in it. We're just going to cut some full two before just for the heck of it. And where we at on the scale here. See that's something else you got to watch. You got to see where you're at. So we're going to go ahead and uh, so I'm going to turn the camera. Only got one hand. I want to get to a good point on that. Okay. Now we're going to undog. So we're going to hit the up. That looks pretty good. Dogs out. Dogs down. Turn her down, arms down, and I re-bottom the dogs all the time. We're going to hit one set. There we go. So, let's, uh, oh, turn the camera. So, if you get to see this video, you're going to say, wow, that idiot goes through a lot of bother. Just to make a sawmill video. Okay, you don't get hit set. There's your one inch board. Back to the saw. Then we're going to whittle this down to uh, eight and a quarter. We're going to cut full two by fours. We'll split them in half. Now this face is looking better, so we're going to take one more board off of here. Then we're going to roll back to the other face. Always want to make sure you have enough. I can't put it back. It's actually not a bad little piece of one by. So, we're coming back. And what do we got to do here? Well, we got to reach down there to the camera. Don't forget. People to yell at you. All right. I always pull the turner up a little bit. And then I release the dogs, release the hounds. Okay, and that was that foot pedal there. That's how that thing come flying up. And we're gonna go ahead and dog it down. And we're gonna continue down. Well, let, me, let me get a full set here. That's almost to where we wanna be. Let's turn that camera. Wow, is this difficult. Probably had this log sawed up already, but this is fun. Something different. Alright, now using 
the fast forward button. We're going to take it to eight and a quarter. And you just jog it down. And we're going to cut real slow here. Because we're going to be cutting just a sliver off. And you don't want that saw walking out on you. Okay, now we have a two-sided can that is for the right width or thickness, whatever you want to call it. Now we're going to lay this thing down. So we're going to hit the reverse and I'm going to hit the turner up, up with the dogs, and we're going to reverse the knees. And that should be enough. Now we're going to just turn the chain a little bit here and it should flop her down. Now we hit the forward button and we come on, we look for the laser light. Since we got a lot of rot, we're not going to worry about even set tapers or nothing. This log isn't worth it, so now we're going to hit the dogs down. We're held good. We're going to turn the camera. Okay, now we got to 
or the camera gonna share it with everybody. So we're gonna bring it to four inches. You always want to be moving forward. You don't want to wind that back. Okay, camera back to the saw. We just did that. And you can see when I pull back on this stick, the feet carry. Alright, well, hopefully that was successful. And we'll let the dogs up so they can get the boards off of there. And I always do is I reverse my knees. And when I have two hands, I'm usually to run the dogs out. And then we run the dogs out and down. The reason I do that, that retracts my cylinders. All right, we'll talk to you when we're done here. All right. Well, we survived it, Ed. Yes, we did. Two cameras in the cab. And uh, I can't believe we actually got... Eight two-by-fours. Eight two-by-fours. And also, that'll edge out a piece of one-by-six. Um, <laughs> and then here was at the beginning of the video. I was showing a... Uh, I needed a little little idler on here for tension. And that thing worked out really nice. It's tracking fairly decent. It's just walking a little bit. But that takes all the slap out of it. And that, that solved the big problem. Because that thing was... That, that was almost scary how bad that was... Uh, how bad that thing was slapping around yeah, but uh in the face. and the saw mill's getting cleaned up and uh it's just every day there's something different to do and uh one day we'll do some saw sharpening for you yeah but um get into some hardwoods here yeah we got some we got some big blocking to cut uh that'll be on uh saturday's video but uh all right everybody i hope you enjoyed this friday Eve video and i'm not sure how i'm going to edit this uh, i'm going to watch both and I don't think there was nothing on the lens this time. Yeah, that bothered me. There's 45 people that told me that, that I know there was something on the lens. We didn't know. We didn't know. And I'm saw, and you can see. I, I'm not out there looking at the lens. But when I edited it, I did see it. So it was either no video or a little bit of... Uh, you had to go with it. Yep. And, uh, oh, there's John over here. I don't know. What do you think, John? We got to get you a proper place. We got John sitting back here. He's protected behind them shovels, so. Yeah. But yeah, you, you got to take care of your turtles. That's, that'd be turtle abuse. So, <laughs> all right, we'll see you. We'll see you on Saturday's video, everybody. Thanks for supporting this channel, and please like and subscribe, and we'll talk to you later. Thank you. Bye bye.